So thanks a lot, everyone, for coming. And uh, I, am a, I apologize for my voice. I just uh, coming back from uh, um, Amsterdam, Hadoop Summit. And <clears throat> I was too excited. Apparently, there, so I'm about to lose it. <clears throat> I'll try to not. Anyway, um, we want to talk about the sexiest, actually, project in the Apache ecosystem. And I'm surprised that you know people are not hanging on the walls, literally. Um, I would like to, to start with, I would like to um, invite my colleague and good friend, Roman, um, to here just for a minute, maybe. You don't need more, I guess. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Roman and I, we, we started Big Top back in uh, Cloudera 2011, yep. 2010, right? So, and since then, it's it become the TLP project. And uh, this is the framework which is uh, used by every single commercial vendor of the Hadoop distribution actually in the world today. Even MapWire actually using it. In, but in that's not part. why you invited me here, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I think I, I have to, I have to uh, take my, my, yeah, you have my hat because I'm the stool now, right? Yes, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yes. So, this is <laughs> so we recently had a uh, change of the uh, leadership at the Big Top project. So I used to be a VP of Big Top, and that's still how my profile for the Apache Con looks like. I have to update it now. Kos is now a VP of Big Top, and uh, well, best of luck to you guys. You know, to do this, like, <laughs> it, you know, it's all yours now. now Thanks, buddy. Right. So now go Community back. Community effort, <laughs> anyway. All right. Okay, but I'll come back at the second time ah, of the talk. Okay, okay. So. cool. <laughs> anyway, um, I'd, li I'd like to actually talk a little bit about Big Top and tell how, how cool is the project and why it's actually cool. So, um, Hadoop ecosystem is, is incredibly complex. And actually, for those who doesn't recognize this geeky stuff, this is the um, World of the Rings, uh, the, the, the Lord of the Rings, sorry, thing. So there is a three, seven, nine, and one rings, right? But anyway, so um, Hadoop, Hadoop is very, very complex. Hadoop ecosystem is very complex. I think right now we can count about 17 to 19 uh, projects all together in the ecosystem. And um, uh, communities are relentless, actually, in producing new versions, patching, fixing bugs, you know, that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and uh, uh, you always can actually build totally your own thing with, with official, you know, Apache accepted patches. And many people actually do this. Um, so it's very hard to navigate, essentially, right? And, uh, <clears throat> oh, anyway, we, we've talked about this. So, and uh, the, the worst part, actually, of this is this is a relatively, relatively up-to-date picture of the Hadoop uh, genealogy tree, right? So I'm, I apologize that it, it's, not, it's not very clear because a lot of small things and all. And this actually doesn't show the whole Hadoop tree. So I, I cut it off uh, somewhere around Hadoop 18, which was uh, the, the official, uh, essentially, main line of the Hadoop back in 2009, whatever it is. <clears throat> so and since then, the, you know, the, this, this whole thing actually exploded, right? Um, we have companies coming in and doing crazy things with, with patches and producing their own you know, subversions of the features and uh, binary compatible and compatible versions and, and all, that, all, all that. So you probably can imagine how hard is that just to you know, go through the Hadoop process of building releases and releasing it and making sure that you know, you're producing working stuff, right? Just Hadoop itself. Now think about this, Hadoop is not just HDFS plus MapReduce that it used to be before, right? So Hadoop is essentially is a huge balloon of, of you know, as I said, 19, 17 to 19 components, as, as far as I remember. And uh, <clears throat> there is HBase, there is uh, SQL front ends of some kind, right? So Hives and uh, Phoenix for, for HBase. Um, there is in-memory in process in Spark, and we just got recently another guys coming in and saying, like, hey, guys, we want to be a part of, part of this thing. Uh, storage cache and, um, in HDFS. Storage cache and that uh, Tachyon project is sort of trying to add now, right? There's connectors, there's DSL languages. Basically, there's a bunch of crazy stuff. And some of them are relatively simple. So Phoenix, for instance, is a relatively, you know, contained component. Whereas HBase, for instance, is a monster on its own, which has three different lines of development, bunch of compatible and compatible history inside of it. Uh, it might work with some versions of the Hadoop, some might not work with some of some others. 
And if you look at, uh, for instance, HBA's uh, profile to, to build this thing, right? So this is this is gigantic set of profiles in Maven, and you know, just to be compliant with a bunch of uh, versions of, of uh, Hadoop and HDFS. So it's incredibly hard to manage it, right? Like like enormously hard and. Uh, Fortunately enough, and then yeah, that's uh, I'm not picking up on Pivotal, right? So they're good guys, and um, they bribe me with T-shirt today. <clears throat> so, but that's that's essentially the extreme extreme, I guess, uh, of of complexity, right? So, and 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 great part, right? So great part is just Hadoop beats itself, right? So people tend to to pile tons of their own proprietary stuff, not necessarily even proprietary stuff, but tons of stuff on the uh, de facto open source stack to meet the needs of their customers and, and you know, that, that's crazy. So, and somehow you need to actually make sure that that all works, right? And, and when three months down the road, you actually need to update the, release the update stuff, you need to make sure that you didn't break the previous stuff, right? So you need to, to do the integration testing, you need to do uh, package testing that, you know, make sure the upgrade package, the, the, pa the package upgrades would work properly and, you know, all that kind of crap. Anyway, so I want to bring them all, right? So I. I actually wanted to say want to rule them all, but it wouldn't be exactly true. That's my exp expansionist vision of the world, right? So I'm Russian, so it's, you know, we wear next things, right? So, um, okay, so the beauty of, of Big Top. So we'll, we'll see the demo a little bit later, but uh, essentially the idea about the whole Big Top is that you can't define bill of materials, right? And bill of materials essentially look like uh, a list of components with their versions, right? I mean, it's a little bit more complex than that, but, eh, you know, for practical purposes. So what you can do when, when you need to def uh, work on your stack, right? So you define the bomb first, right? Bill of materials first. You say, I want a Hadoop uh, version 2.0.6. I want HBase version 0.96. I want a Hive 0.12. I want um, this of that version, Spark version 0.9. Excuse me. And, and all that kind of crap, right? So you define all your, all your things. Then, um, fortunately, again, in the standard big top, we do have, uh, for, for a bunch of the c c components that I just mentioned, we have a set of the um, uh, codes, I would say, that allow you to produce standard Linux packaging, that allows you to run verification on the packages and the applications built within the packages, right? And uh, we have a code that allows you to actually um, uh, click all your release build process into the traditional continuous integration system so you can actually have a centralized uh, dashboard of some kind, right? So <clears throat> if you need to add a new component, you probably would go and start developing the packaging code yourself, writing tests, and yada, yada, yada. Actually, we, we get a new components all the time, so people are actually going through this process uh, once in a while. But essentially, if you're trying to just reshape your, your own stack in some, some, some sort of, you know, form. Like, uh, for instance, you don't need everything that Hadoop ecosystem can offer you. You only want uh, HDFS and HBase. That's all, right? So um, you can totally define a very simple bomb with two components in it. Click, well, not click a button is the wrong word for Unix. So <laughs> hit the command line, <laughs> hit the command line command. And uh, a few minutes later, literally, you will get yourself packages that could be installed and, and you know, the software would, would, would work, essentially, right? Uh, and uh, yeah, last but not least, actually, we do have, as a part of the Big Top ecosystem, the set of the fully functional deployment recipes uh, written in Puppet. So you actually can go to the cluster and just deploy your things, you know, just in a proper fashion, right? All configuration files will be generated for you and everything. So I know that you're already excited. Wait a little bit. I'll show you how it works. So, and you know, you deployed it, you tested it because we have integration tests and you might have your own integration test and what's not, and you found some problems. Ah, big deal, right? So you come back, you, you change something in, in your components, you hit the build again, you rebuild the, the new version of the packages, you run update or fresh install, you got your working cluster again, and you rinse and repeat and rinse and repeat until you get actually, um, until you get the, <laughs> Uh, the result you desire, right? So this is my favorite um, exploratory elephant. So anyway, <clears throat> so now uh, once we sort of talked a little bit about the the basics, right? And again, I mean, it might be it might be a little hard to to wrap the head around it, 
but uh, we'll, we'll go on into the demo and uh, we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit more in details. Um, a, couple of, a couple of key studies, the, the real, real things, right? So as I mentioned, all commercial vendors, vendors and actually not commercial as well, so Apache, Apache Hadoop is packaged by BigTop and you can download it and it would work like awesomely because we have intensive testing process in the open, right? So uh, we do this like every quarter or, so or something. But anyway, so any commercial vendor of the Hadoop distribution is actually using us, Big Top, as a, as a framework to, to do the thing, right? So um, Intel probably doesn't do this anymore, right? <laughs> so and uh, because we happen to work in these companies, and again, this is our bread and butter, so we decided to talk a little bit about what we've done with Big Top in the past. Um, I'll go first, okay? <laughs> so, uh, Vandiska, so um, when I joined the company last year, at the beginning of last year, so we decided actually to go forward with uh, um, Hadoop distribution. And uh, um, the reason was that we, we actually in an interesting, interesting business. We're building multi-active masters distributed systems, right? So it's, it's, it's pretty cool. So you have multiple active name nodes on the HDFS, for instance, right? You can kill the minority of them and nobody gives crap, right? So it, it keeps going. But anyway, so we decided to go forward, but we needed, we needed a vehicle to, to actually deliver the solution to the market. And uh, obviously Hadoop, um, open source Apache Hadoop was the right choice for it, right? So, but market, you know, market timing was pressure, uh, was, was pressing us pretty badly, so we needed actually to do this very quickly. And I'm telling you guys, this is the absolute world record. 28 days from the start, when I started the it was the company, until we actually pushed, pushed the, the commercial distro of the Hadoop out, 28 days. Nobody beat it, beat it yet, so, okay, anyway. So what we've done actually is, um, and again, just, just because Big Top was there, we were able to make it. Otherwise, we would be dead in, dead in the water, apparently. So the challenges, the challenges we, we had during this, this process, and again, I mean, the process I just described to you how to build your own stack essentially was what we did at Vandiska. But, uh, and technicalities are not probably the, the most interesting part of it. But anyway, so the challenges that, that were there actually is that we needed a repetitive development, deployment, build process, right? So we can actually make sure that the bits we were rolling out, uh, you know, fully certified, fully tested, can be used by people actually if they want to, to deploy and, and, and work with it. Um, we needed to make sure that what we deliver is exactly the same as open source Apache releases, right? So Hadoop released version, HBase released version, and, and so on and so far. So it essentially was not kind of our commercial offering, but just certified Apache, Apache Hadoop binaries, essentially. The most challenging part was that the team that I, I sort of inherited, right, so they, they didn't have any expertise in Hadoop, nor packaging, nor stack building, nor nothing. I mean, total, total noobs, right? So they, they, good engineers, good software, you know, um, engineers, programmers and all. But software integration, system integration is essentially a little bit different realm uh, than say code development, right? So a um, bunch of, bunch of, and again, I'm not trying to separate myself. I've been doing development for 20 plus years. But in many cases, you would say like, what are you talking, there is a bug in the system. It works on my laptop, right? So, so what, what, what do you want? But when you start actually rolling out the, the, the production code to, to people uh, to consume, the attitude actually changed quite, quite, you know, harshly, so because if, if a customer has a problem, so it's your neck on the line, essentially, right? Um, <clears throat> so, changing the attitude of the system, uh, teaching the system as you go, trying to roll out the distribution in a very, very, very short period of time, and essentially trying to build this uh, incredibly um, hard and complex um, uh, system um, in, a, in a short period. So that, that was the challenges, right? And again, Big Top, Big Top was awesomely helpful in this, um, in this endeavor. So as I mentioned, we just worked carefully on the set of the components we wanted to have, um, integrated this whole thing into the, the Jenkins essentially, right? So that we have, so, so we have like, you know, the dashboard that shows the, the green builds or the red builds, so you can react quickly, that kind of stuff. Uh, Puppet, was extremely helpful to help us actually to deploy the code and test the code, you know, pretty frequently. 
um, I mean, be, the, the build applications, the, the binaries, not the code. And uh, as I said, we were rinsing and repeating like till, till the blue in the face essentially, we ran so many times because we were stepping on the bugs and stepping on the issues and it was not. So, but yeah, uh, we did it. And when we started actually, that essentially was pretty much the, the, the state of the art in Hadoop ecosystem, right? And then next iteration was like that. And then there was another iteration and there was another iteration and Today it's actually even a little bit more complex because CDH5 came around and you know that kind of stuff, and Intel is not there anymore. So oh, it's not here anymore either. So I don't. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was that was a great experience. So I will let Roman to pontificate about his. Uh, and then we will do demo. <laughs> Can you hear me? All right. Uh, so let me talk a little bit about the Pivotal experience. And I thought that Konstantin would do a demo ahead of me so I don't have to bore you with you know, yet another you know, laundry list of things that we've done with BigTalk, but I guess the demo is at the end. So uh, Pivotal uh, it has an interesting history uh, you know, with regard to Hadoop. So the company basically uh, started as a spin-off uh, from you know, VMware and EMC. And before that, uh, the Hadoop effort was essentially part of the Green Plum. So at Green Plum, uh, the idea behind Hadoop was just as much as you know, the idea behind Hadoop at, let's say, when Disco, it's to have you know, your own distribution of Hadoop that you sell as a product to your customers, right? Uh, it was based on the fork of Big Top, uh, you know, pretty ancient, you know, 0 0.3 incubating uh, Hadoop One ecosystem, and uh, it had very little community interaction. Uh, again, it was at the time when everybody was trying to do their own Hadoop distributions. And what they did actually made sense. I mean, I will talk a little bit about you know, lessons learned, but uh, the enablement that BigTop provided you know, allowed the company to basically very quickly <coughs> have a product out. Now, uh, at some point, I like to say that you know, uh, Pivotal, sort of the Green Plum sort of graduated uh, as a PhD, you know, Pivotal Hadoop distribution, and Pivotal Hadoop distribution uh, is kind of something else. It's not really, I mean, it is a Hadoop distribution in a way, but uh, the actual point of uh, Hadoop at Pivotal is to integrate it into Pivotal One. So in that way, we're a little bit like you know, Amazon, where Amazon has a product called Amazon EMR, you know, Elastic MapReduce, uh, where they might not necessarily sell that sort of uh, Hadoop you know, product uh, to you, but they give you uh, as a service. Again, in Pivotal's case, you can still get Hadoop as a standalone distribution. Uh, but the whole point is more about integrating it uh, into a platform. Uh, so right now it's based on another fork of BigTop, which is BigTop 04. It's Hadoop 2-based. Uh, and uh, we started integrating it with all sorts of uh, interesting software projects that we have at Pivotal now, Hawk being you know, one of the examples uh, that is a SQL on top of Hadoop. And uh, the use of BigTop is still very much in place, uh, but it's a very different sort of take on the whole exercise. So what are the lessons for Pivotal? Uh, I think uh, we actually need to start thinking about BigTop as a Fedora, right? So especially now that we don't actually have a distribution to protect, you know, at least not so much, uh, we can allow for all of the innovation that happens in BigTop to basically be available on our platform Pivotal One. So in a way, I mean, just like with Fedora, if you don't have a package in, you know, let's say RHEL, you know, chances are if you grab it from Fedora uh, EPIL uh, repo, I mean, it will work. It won't be supported by Red Hat, but it will work. So I think what we really have to sort of look at BigTop as is sort of this Fedora uh, aspect of the whole Hadoop ecosystem. We build the packages and we make them available uh, on, you know, Pivotal One platform, or frankly, on any platform that builds Hadoop via BigTop. So uh, Amazon, for example, can totally do the same, right? Uh, we have to become part of the community uh, more. Uh, I believe that you know, the only way you can sort of keep uh, in touch with all of the open source innovation that's happening is to participate in the community as it goes. So the model where you take the software behind the firewall, you kind of you know, tweak it for your own purpose, you never talk to the community again, and maybe when the community has a next release, you, know, you rebase onto the, you know, on top of that release. I suppose it could work. It worked for you know, at least two incarnations of the product, but uh, it cannot really capture all of the innovation that's happening. So being in front of the community is the only way. Just say no to forking. Uh, we have to work on customer requirements upstream, right? And what that means is, again, 
uh, we used to take the software behind the firewall and for Hawk, uh, the example that I gave, for example, we needed this thing in Hadoop called truncate. So Hadoop HDFS file system by default doesn't support the sort of POSIX truncate uh, uh, functionality. And again, there are different views on you know, whether it actually needs to support truncate or maybe snapshots give you, you know, similar functionality. But in Pivotal's case, we needed truncate for uh, Hawk, you know, to support Hawk functionality. And we ended up putting truncate into sort of PHD, Pivotal Hadoop distribution as a, as a specific patch. You know, the patch exists in the open, but we haven't really worked with the community to sort of make that an accepted feature of the HDFS. We really have to work on those types of customer requirements upstream. Uh, doing patches, you know, for hot escalations behind the firewall is okay because, you know, at the end of the day, we're all in the business of actually, you know, satisfying our customer requirements. But if you're talking about, you know, crucial feature like that, it has to happen upstream. We have to also participate in release planning, right? You know, because so far, if you look into the Hadoop release process, uh, and frankly, into big top release process, right? You know, it's being driven by, you know, few sort of, I call them usual suspects. And it's fine, but what happens then is, <clears throat> you know, the release for Hadoop or Big Top uh, get pushed out. And then all of these companies, they're like, well, we, you know, if only we had this feature or that feature in the release, right? You know, then we would not be in the need of patching. And the reason you don't have that feature is because you don't participate in the upstream sort of release planning, right? You have to be out there. You have to follow the very same software development practices as you're following within your company in the upstream community as well. And the last point that I think, you know, I'm very uh, focused on, you know, pushing at Pivotal personally because, you know, at the end of the day, I'm a Pivotal employee. Uh, I would like to help us leverage Big Top's infrastructure internally, uh, partially because I think it's pretty good, uh, but also because we have to have a feedback loop, right? You know, we have to have the loop of, uh, sort of the customer feedback, not just this for the software itself, but for the infrastructure as well. So big top infrastructure is all about Jenkins, it's all about continuous integration, but we don't really get any customers, you know, telling us how good or how bad it is, and I think, you know, it's about time we start doing it. Which brings me to my following slide, you know, what are the lessons for the big top itself? Uh, it's good that, you know, I can push for all of this agenda within the company, and I hope, you know, if you work for the company that, you know, has interest in Hadoop distribution by one way or the other, maybe you will help me push for the same agenda within the company. But there's also tons of stuff that we as a community, uh, now, you know, switching my head to just being a community member of Big Top community, uh, there's tons of stuff that we can do. Uh, and, you know, meeting sort of companies halfway is, I think, what Apache communities are pretty good about. Uh, we have to make it work because it's only when we get quite a bit of community participation, the project, you know, prospers, right? And one way to get that community participation, you know, get the community bigger is, you know, to make it interesting for the companies, you know, to demonstrate that company actually gets some value out of using the project. So I think, you know, promoting common build and our infrastructure, you know, something that sort of was uh, last bullet on the previous slide. Uh, would be really good even within the community. We kind of have to codify it because even today, if you look at Apache Software Foundation, uh, we have this, you know, builds.apache.org, right? You know, and it's sort of like this thing that's on the side, you know, people use it for RE and for, you know, uh, continuous integration, but there is no sort of codifying it, right? You know, nobody is really fully in charge of not the infrastructure, but how you use the infrastructure. I think we should... You know, there is this old principle, uh, infrastructure as a service. I guess I would say it's kind of like configuration as a service. We have to codify it. We have to make sure that whatever we use as build and release infrastructure is as much part of the, every single project that is at Apache as much as code is. We have to avoid broken window syndrome. I mean, I'm as guilty as any, anybody else. Like I would go to the, you know, Jenkins, I would see that a bunch of builds are broken and I'm like, yeah, I know why it's broken. You know, it's all this like that branch that this guy or myself is working on. So like it should be broken. I know why. I don't have any time to test it. But then, you know, just take a pause. Think about it, right? You know, you know why it's broken, but the guy who is coming to the project for the first time doesn't. You know, he looks at it and says like, it's all broken, right? You know, how can I go back to my boss and say that this is an awesome project when even the builds are not working, right? You know. 
we have to avoid, uh, you know, giving this sort of false impression, or at least, you know, we have to have a cleaned up environment where stuff is working all the time, 100% of the time, and if anything gets broken, you know, committers just jump at it. So big top releases don't patch. Uh, we have this rule in place that, you know, when big top release, something that you can actually deploy, and Konstantin will demonstrate it in, you know, uh, five minutes or so, uh, you can deploy the big top, right? You know, but when you deploy what gets uh, pushed as a set of big top bits, all of these bits are essentially big top provided builds of the upstream release Apache software. So we don't actually patch any of the software. We try to participate in the upstream release planning and release execution to make sure that the features get into the releases and the bug fixes get into the releases, but we don't patch. Now, vendors actually do patch. Uh, part of the reason is, like I gave you an example of Pivotal, you know, we had to have a patch in place that's part of the open source sort of trunk, or maybe it's not even on trunk yet, but it's available in the open source, but it hasn't really been fully accepted by the community yet. So we have to put it in place. And pretty much every single vendor has that uh, issue. Big Top has been really kind of ambivalent towards patching. We kind of left it to the uh, company's own devices. If you want to patch, you kind of have to come up with your own infrastructure. I think we have to take them to that use case. Why? Because, you know, I've been at Cloudera and I've been at Pivotal and at least at these two companies, the patching process is not the same. And I think if we can leverage the common patching process, we will again leverage Big Top to a much fuller extent. Uh, we have to make tests easier to use. Uh, one of the big, big, big value adds of BigTop is that it's not just you can, you know, assemble this hodgepodge of software. You can actually validate it. You can test it. There is a community-supported set of integration tests that can tell you whether it's good or bad. Uh, unfortunately, it's not as easy to use as I would like it to be. And there is a bunch of really good community work that's happening around it. You know, Jay sitting right there is, you know, doing quite a bit of that. Thank you, Jay. I mean, it's, it's really, I know it's a really thankless job, and that's why I'm saying, like, we should at least, you know, thank everybody who is, you know, pitching at least a little bit. But we should also invest in it. Uh, and we should, you know, you invest in documentation, white papers, demos, you know, these talks, whatever. So, you know, if you have any cool, awesome, you know, use of Big Top, talk to us, you know, we, we, can, we can help, you know, figure out what events we should be, uh, we should be at. Uh, before Konstantin goes with the demo, let me actually just give a few kind of like closing thoughts. Uh, like I said, I used to be sort of, you know, VP of the project, which at Apache doesn't really give you any special powers whatsoever. It's just like, you know, you're essentially a bureaucrat, you know, like filing paperwork, you know, for SF board meetings. Uh, but you kind of feel like, you know, you're empowered, right? You know, you can like wax, you know, about what's, what needs to happen with the project. So now that I'm actually not even the VP, let me do just that, you know, for one last time. So uh, the road ahead. So what I would personally be very excited about, you know, happening in Big Top, and to a certain extent, this is the stuff that I will be working on myself because, you know, I'm so excited about it now. So I think we have to rethink or at least augment our deployment environments. So when Big Top started, and that was back in 2011-ish, 10-ish, 2010, uh, it was all about, you know, just classical old school Unix packaging, right? You know, why? Because Hadoop distribution existed on this long running clusters where you would have a DevOps, you know, like suppose you work at Yahoo, right? You're a DevOps at Yahoo who is in charge of supporting a huge Hadoop infrastructure. So what you have in place is, you know, maybe RHEL, maybe CentOS, maybe Ubuntu, you know, some version of Linux, you know, sometimes maybe uh, SUSE. Uh, but you don't really update that infrastructure all that often. I mean, you provide security patches and whatnot, but it's a very static infrastructure, right? You know, uh, you need to understand what's there. You need to manage it. You need to audit it. And that's why Unix-style software packaging with, you know, RPMs, Debian's makes a lot of sense. Because as a DevOps, you can basically very quickly see what is the state of your entire infrastructure. And you can leverage tools like Puppet Chef, you know, to make it easier for you to manage that infrastructure. So that's how Big Top started. We wanted to give the Hadoop and, you know, Hadoop ecosystem software uh, to the DevOps community in the way that would be easiest for them to consume. Uh, I call it vanilla servers, right? You know, it's the servers that we all know and love. You know, they date back to the 80s. They're still in place. My, my, you know, 
when I talk about it, all this newfangled stuff, I mean, I have a friend from East Coast who basically, you know, all, like every single time I talk about it, he's like, dude, you don't understand how lucky you are on the West Coast. I still have to support freaking Windows NT. NT, can you believe that? So yes, I do get the fact that, you know, we shouldn't be just like dropping, you know, old school Unix packaging. But there is different style of deployment nowadays in place, right? Different style of experiencing sort of Hadoop or cluster like, you know, frameworks. And uh, I call them, you know, vanilla VMs or containers at the sort of first level, which is, well, you can totally take something like Docker. And at that point, there is no reason for you to basically pretend that's what's running inside of Docker is a long running service. Why? Because, you know, it's the thing that you build on the fly, right? You know, your Docker environment could change you know, with the, every single time you deploy the Docker container. So all of a sudden, you know, all the overhead that you're getting from installing RPMs or, you know, Debian packages is not even needed. Why would you have it? You, in fact, can move from maintaining individual packages to maintaining roles or container images for Docker. So if you have an environment that, you know, has Hadoop, uh, but not just Hadoop and HBase, you know, as well, you will probably have nodes that need to be uh, HDFS data nodes and you know, H-based region servers because you know, that's the typical deployment uh, strategy for Hadoop clusters. But at that point, you actually can bake a Docker image with that roles in place on the fly using some kind of a newfangled packaging that you know, big top community is bound to come up with because we're so good at it, right? But that's the stuff that's really exciting for me, right? How do you solve that problem? How do you actually bake the image on the fly? How do you move from static deployment of packages to a role-based deployment of VMs and containers? And at this level, I'm still talking about just bare you know, vanilla VMs and containers. I mean, we can all do it today. Linux supports it you know, very well, so we can all do it today. But kicking it up a notch, we can actually think about, you know, the typical comeback you have from anybody who gets, you know, to think about deploying Hadoop in a virtualized or containerized environment. So a typical comeback is like, yeah, it's all nice. You know, it makes my administration really nice. But what about performance? What about, you know, all of the costs that I would suffer on the performance side of things? But now, you know, we have an interesting twist on that conversation. So I've recently got introduced uh, to a really awesome project called OSV. It's kind of like a specialized VM. It's built on KVM. And if you want to know more about it, it's, well, actually, before I go there, let me say that this is the piece of technology that genuinely I haven't been excited that much about a piece of technology since ZFS and uh, DTrace at Sun Microsystems. It's like, this is the stuff. And I really cannot thank enough, you know, Don, Don Marty, who is here today, you know, for uh, agreeing to come and present at the Big Top Meetup. So Big Top will have a meetup today in uh, sort of meetup, meetup slash hackathon, you know, today and tomorrow. Uh, Red Hat and uh, Jay, you know, have been kind and nice to organize it. But Don will be presenting. You will, uh, you, all of your questions about, you know, why I'm so excited about this technology will get answers and I hope you will get as much excited. But basically what this technology does, so here's a little bit of a preview. A little bit of a preview so that you know what you're coming for. And if you use this piece of technology, you deploy a VM that not only doesn't suffer performance degradation, it outperforms the host. Think about it. For the first time ever, you basically have a container slash VM that freaking outperforms the host. This is just like so cool. The conversation just completely changes. It's not how much you lose, it's how much you gain. It's like, yeah, no, you don't understand. It's how much you gain. So come to the Big Top Meetup. It'll be, I'm, I'm telling you, it'll be awesome. So on that note, uh, baking versus frying. I mean, in the DevOps community, there are two ways of sort of addressing the issue of deploying. You know, baking is when you have uh, the fully baked images. It's like when you have an AMI. And that's what I alluded to, you know, talking like, we can totally have like Docker images, you know, we can have big top images on like index.docker.io. So you don't have to futz with, you know, deploying. Your images comes to you pre-configured, you know, you just need to put it onto your Docker infrastructure and you just go with it. So that's baking. Now, frying is once you get that image, you know, chances are there is something, you know, little things that you're kind of like not totally happy with. And typically in the DevOps community, you do baking with, you know, 
just building a complete image and you, you do frying of that image using, you know, Chef or Puppet. Uh, we can still keep using, you know, Chef and Puppet, you know, Big Top comes with the Puppet recipes, but there is a little bit of additional interesting infrastructure that we can put in place. Again, come to our meetup, I will talk a little bit more about it. And again, things like rolling upgrades, you know, side-by-side -side installs, we're still not really addressing it with the classical sort of Unix packaging. Uh, if you look at companies like Cloudera, they're trying to do it with this, you know, really sort of forked off format called parcels, which has no community support. I mean, it's basically the thing that the company have developed, which is again, nothing wrong with it. But for Big Top, I think we can do better. And finally, validation. Uh, this is a long slide, but basically what you have to take from it is any bit of activity that, we, that, that can be in support of, you know, making sure that we validate the software. I don't know, I can personally like vouch for buying anybody, you know, a keg of beer. Like if you contribute, you know, a good integration test, you know, come to me, I'll buy you a keg of beer. Because uh, this is how the projects, you know, live and die, right? You know, you have to make sure that the stuff works. And uh, it's all cool and nice, you know, to hack on the software and come up with like ways of integrating Big Top with, you know, OSV. Uh, but at the end of the day, it has to be about testing. Uh, growing the ecosystem. This is the ultimate, right? You know, Big Top has been ahead of the commercial distributions of Hadoop. Uh, we've had packages that commercial distributions of Hadoop haven't really adopted yet. So Giraffe is one example. And when I say that, again, it's not a, I'm not, I'm not really complaining about commercial vendors of Hadoop because, you know, it's a big cost that you have to evaluate when you get to support an open source com component, right? You know, all of a sudden, it's not just, you know, getting the software, but it's also, you know, factoring in what is my documentation cost? What is my training cost? What is my escalation SLAs? You know, wh what is my support cost? So having the project not being adopted by the uh, commercial Hadoop vendors is okay as long as we have them in Big Top and I want to have more, more of them, right? You know, uh, when I was preparing for the ApacheCon, I mean, we did some analysis uh, of the mailing list traffic at, you know, Apache Software Foundation in general. And I think the guy from Infra uh, came up with the statistics that more than 50% of all email traffic nowadays is about Hadoop ecosystem projects. So like this is what the Apache Software Foundation does, you know, we kind of like do a lot of Hadoop ecosystem projects. So some of them uh, are here, you know, like Stratosphere, you know, the thing that just, you know, got proposed to the incubator, we should totally get it into Big Top. Some of the projects are not even part of the Apache Software Foundation yet. You know, there is grid gain. Again, something that is pretty cool. If you want to know more about it, come to our meetup. Uh, HBase indexer, you know, Lily HBase indexer, uh, Lipstick, you know, yes it is for a pig, uh, and Bros, you know, all these projects, I think one of the way we can actually get them into the uh, Apache uh, family is to get them into Big Top first, demonstrate how nice it is, you know, to be sort of part of the ASF community and then get the people behind these projects, you know, thinking, well, if they can do so much for me, you know, just on the deployment sort of packaging, you know, validation side, maybe it is time for us to consider incubation. Maybe it is time for us to consider, you know, joining the ASF family. So doing, you know, by growing the ecosystem, I don't just mean growing the big top ecosystem or growing the Hadoop ecosystem. I actually mean growing the ASF ecosystem because I literally want all these projects to be under the ASF umbrella. I mean, they're all Apache licensed anyway, so, you know, why not? Uh, growth in the last six months on the community growth side uh, has been, you know, we've had sort of Apache Spark in memory analytics, uh, Phoenix, HBA SQL frontend, Groovy, pretty cool stuff. Uh, unification of user facing interfaces, you know, Gradle build system, uh, tons of, you know, really good work, but we want more of it. And that's where all of you come in. Uh, I actually have a presentation, you know, early, uh, later today where I will be talking about sort of particular use case for Big Top. It's called building Google in a box. It's how you can build kind of like, you know, prototype of what Google built way back in like 97. Uh, and one of the components that I will be slightly complaining about is Apache Nudge. Well, my complaint is not so much about the technology. It's the fact that it's not part of the Big Top ecosystem. So when I was preparing my demo, everything worked flawlessly. Again, partially because of the Big Top sort of validation test, but because Big Top community hasn't been sort of, hasn't had cycles to invest in integrating Notch into Big Top ecosystem, uh, Notch is not part of it, right? You know, we have to basically, like I had to really do quite a bit of hacking to make it work, you know, for the demo. Uh, if we can integrate all of these things into Big Top, 
I can just like, you know, YAM install it or maybe even Docker, you know, deploy it and be done with it. So everything that you see in the past uh, six months been great. I mean, I'm really happy that we have Spark. So uh, Cos will talk about it in a minute. Uh, but let's do more of it. So now back to you, Cos. <coughs> the time actually, right. so no cool stuff to show. Right, but essentially that's what we do in uh, Big Top community, right? So the first first shot on the, on the house and then you hooked for life, for life right? Um, ah, you missed that. So we're pretty big, we're growing, so come and join us. Anyway, what have we been talking about in, in a nice cool demo? So what I have here is uh, running VM. Right, so I have this, this VM actually up and running. So um, that has essentially nothing on it but just a Linux, what? Oh, that was smart. Okay, here we go, cool. So, um, right, just a Linux, nothing else. Um, I can show you that, I'm not kidding you, there is no Hadoop. There is no nothing actually of a sort, so it's a clean system. All I have here is essentially, uh, what I have here? Yeah, that's exactly what I have here. Okay, so what I have here is essentially big top, big top workspace, git clone big top workspace, which is, again, kidding you not, this is master. There is nothing changed, this is, I don't know, what, okay. But uh, uh, there is only one file which is custom, and that file, do, can you see this guy's all right? Uh, do you want me to make a little bit bigger? Okay, so that file is a big top puppet deployment uh, configuration file that essentially says, I wanna have my uh, Hadoop head node, which is, you know, wherever, name node uh, or HBase master, unless we define otherwise, or Yarn application manager, resource manager, whatever, unless we defi decided, uh, defined otherwise on this particular host. So this is, this is the, the VM host I, I'm, I'm having here. So it defines the data storage doors, uh, it defines a list of components I want to install. I want to have only Hadoop and, and Spark, nothing else. No Yarn, no, no nothing, right? Uh, and here's the URL essentially to uh, release 07 of Big Top that is the latest and, and greatest, most stable release uh, right now. Okay, so that's all, right? Um, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to fire up, conveniently enough I have the command line in here, uh, fire up the puppet apply, right? So there is no puppet master, there's no nothing, so it's a masterless puppet setup. So all I do essentially, I'm saying here's my module path, here is my um, config file, go, right? So it's going to be a little bit boring in the next couple of minutes, I guess, well, you know, we'll, We'll put it in. But essentially, I, <clears throat> I keep, keep talking through and entertaining you. So um, one of the things I wanted to mention when Roman was, was, was speaking, he said, like, we want we wanna this to be a Fedora of, of, of Linux. So no way, dude. We want it to be Debian of Linux, right? Uh, to start with. <laughs> but uh, at any rate, actually, it was an interesting. I, I, I bumped into the guy who is sitting with a CentOS sign behind him right in the morning today. And I, I came to him and said, like, hey, dude, did you see any, anyone from Canonical yet? I thought he was, he's going he's gonna to hit me with something. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but, uh, right, so what's going on right now? So Puppet is actually installing, um, installing the packages from, the, from our repository, right, according to the list of the, uh, list of the components that they said. Um, because it's essentially yum process it. Um, yeah, that's, that's uh, Red Hat, right? So in this particular case, it pulls all the dependencies that, that, that have to, to be there. And the beauty actually of this particular stack uh, or you know, of, of the way of building the stack is that the Spark, which has a pretty tight reliance on say HDFS APIs and all, right, is built guarantee against the, the version of the Hadoop that I'm just, just installing. So there is no leeway to install a little bit better version of HDFS that might screw, screw up everything. Right? So we, we actually guarantee that the compatibility of the binary APIs and, and you know, RPC versions are, are there, right? So as, as built, okay? So once the installation happened, we are going to see, does it do anything at all? It's better. Okay. Um, yeah, it works. 
Okay, good. So um, once, it's, once the installation happened, uh, the, the Puppet recipes will, will generate actually a bunch of the appropriate config files that will guarantee that, again, Spark or whatever HBase correctly works against the Hadoop cluster that just has been installed and configured, and most important, actually properly deployed in the sense of like formatting HDFS, uh, creating the, the appropriate structures on the file system, which usually, you know, the problem for many people who just run a name node and trying to run, say, a MapReduce job and job tracker fails because some permissions are set wrongly, right? So our deployment mechanism actually takes care about this as well. Um, and uh, so now we, right, we, we're going through the HDFS installation. <clears throat> and as I said, once the configurations are actually set, the, the Puppet, again, will guarantee that the services are actually started in the, wrong, uh, in the right, you know, sequence, for instance. Uh, the, the, the data node would not be started before name node, although technically speaking I can do this and data node would wait, but again, in our deployment mechanism, um, it, it won't happen. The great part about this, this way we're doing uh, with the Puppet, I don't know if we have any, any of the DevOps types in the, in the room, but normally Puppet works in a sort of slightly static way in the sense that uh, you need to define recipes for particular hosts and then store them somewhere else and just, you know, uh, run Puppet Apply um, on the agents and, you know, the, 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 the configuration got pulled from the master and yada, 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 that kind of stuff. So in our case, it's totally, totally flexible, so you can actually uh, run Puppet on as many hosts as you want to um, as far as the config file is the same, essentially, right, and all the configurations would be correct. All the data nodes would be pointing to the same name node and, and that kind of stuff. Okay, so we, we're almost there, I guess, um, and we're running out of time. Yes, questions? Oh yeah, actually we can do, we can do questions while we, because we, we're probably gonna, gonna be short on time. Um, if you guys have any questions, we, we have a mic here in, in the, or you can actually hold the questions and come tonight for, for the hackathon and the meeting, so. Anything, anyone, no? Oh, here we go. There's, uh, just, just a second. Just a small question regarding testing. So you present some uh, study cases, how, um, how the integration test is organized at all. So you collect some custom data and fill, uh, so try the, the, with the real data, and just stop uh, cluster nodes in a Hadoop. Um, Which way, so, so could you explain a bit more in detail? Right, right. so the, the, the traditional, I would say, way, quote unquote, we were doing the integration testing right now on Big Top is yes, we, we actually have uh, small, small data sets pre-generated unle uh, unless we're doing something like TerraGen, TerraSort, which is totally dynamic and that kind of stuff, right? But most of them are actually um, statically generated and stored within the system. So for instance, for, for Hive Peak H-based tests, we, we have some, some pre-generated data. However, there is actually a project happening right now, a Jira opened in, in the, in the uh, Big Top uh, called uh, uh, Big Data Pet Store, I, I think, or Big Top Pet Store, something like that, which is about the, the dynamic generation of the data sets so you can actually test your cluster in full, right? Not necessarily just, you know, integration stuff, but maybe, you know, bigger load or maybe some algorithm to make sure how they scale, you know, that kind of stuff, right? So, yes, it is it, there, and if you, if you have some ideas, come and, come and contribute. Okay, thanks. Yeah, sure. Other questions? We are about to be done. Name node starts. Hopefully it's gonna work. What, uh, what yes. contributions? Sorry, what? what? What contributions are you looking what, for? Tickets wise? What, what distributions? Contributions. Oh, you're, what you're, contributions? Roman, um, Roman was talking about tests and, and bits and pieces. Just for, for anybody that maybe um, is in a position to contribute towards Big Talk? Actually anything, actually anything. So this is the great question because Roman didn't specify, you know, the eligibility for the keg of beer. So I guess I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to contribute a couple of tests tonight. So go, go to the store demo. But uh, seriously, I mean, this is, this is uh, the case where the merrier, the better. I mean, the, the more the merrier, sorry. Uh, we, we're looking for, for anything. I mean, uh, test contributions, code contributions, uh, test framework contribution, packaging code contribution, Puppet. So, I mean, as I said, we are the focal point of Hadoop ecosystem. I, 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 I literally, you know, not trying to, you know, look better than I am, but uh, although I, 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 I'm not looking better. <laughs> 
But anyway, so we're, we're really at the focal point of the, of the ecosystem, right? So we, we need to deal with a lot of complexities. That's where actually anyone can, can be highly useful. We still don't have any Docker, actually. We do have a project, again, working there. <laughs> and you're doing this, right? <laughs> but yeah, uh, and uh, as I said, actually, right now, we formatting, uh, the, the Puppet is actually does the deformatting of HDFS file system, so we're about to, to have the cluster ready. Any, any other questions? Uh, I, I'm sorry, but I think we need to close the questions. We're out of time. We actually have 20 seconds. Come on. Uh, no, that's, count, that's counting up. And, oh, we're actually over time. I'm goddamn. Give me, give me, please, five seconds, guys. It's, it's actually, it's, it's done. I won't be able to run the, 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 the real, real sort of, uh, right. So we have the stuff. I am exporting, I am exporting uh, the master variable, essentially, right? So for those who know what was going on, I'm running the Spark shell, which is an in interactive Scala environment that allows me to, to work with the cluster. And again, sorry, time is out. But this is the, the working, totally working um, Spark on top of HDFS cluster. So <laughs> I blame you, Roman, actually, for, for, for being out of time. But uh, thank, you, thank, you, thank you so much, guys. Please come and join us, actually. It's pretty, pretty cool stuff. So you would, you would be happy. Thank you.